Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my review of Gerald's Game by Stephen King. So as always, I'm going to start out by reading the blurb, then I'm going to go through to some of my tabs, and at the end I'm going to give it my overall thoughts and a rating. So the blurb. A game. A husband and wife game. Gerald's Game. But this time, Jesse didn't want to play. Lying there, spread-eagled and handcuffed to the bedstead while he'd loomed and drooled over Lying there, spread-eagled and handcuffed to the bedstead while he'd loomed and drooled over her, she'd felt angry and humiliated. So she'd kicked out hard. Aimed to hit where it hurt. And now he was dead, a coronary on the floor. Leaving Jesse alone and helpless in a lakeside holiday cabin, miles from anywhere, no one to hear her screams. Alone. Except for the voices in her head that had begun to chatter and argue and sneer. So, I've actually already seen the movie of this, so I kind of knew what to expect, although I couldn't remember the ending so well. Thought this was interesting because I agree with her. Now it was her turn to frown slightly. She had always heard voices inside her head. She guessed everyone did, although people usually didn't talk about them, any more than they talked about their bowel functions, and most of them were old friends, as comfortable as bedroom slippers. This one, however, was new, and there was nothing comfortable about it. It was a strong voice, one that sounded young and vigorous. It also sounded impatient. I just enjoyed how this pa uh, paragraph was written. She drew back her legs, her rising right knee barely missing the promontory of his chin, and then drove her bare feet out again like pistons. The sole and instep of her right drove deep into the bowl of his belly. The heel of her left smashed into the stiff root of his penis, and the testicles hanging below it like pale, ripe fruit. We have a few references to The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe throughout, which is interesting because obviously King himself was inspired and influenced by Poe. Uh, there's a dog involved as well, and I thought this was well written. And interesting too, just to know. Dogs, don't, dogs didn't just wag their tails when they were happy. They, like cats, also wagged them when they were indecisive, still trying to evaluate a situation. The dog had barely flinched at the sound of her voice, but it didn't quite trust the dim room either. Not yet, at least. We have the line, You will not die, it's not poison, which is from Tombstone Blues by Bob Dylan. And then uh, we have Jessie as a young girl, and I thought, again, this was just well put. It seemed to her that only adults could combine emotions in so many daffy ways. If feelings were food, adult feelings would be things like chocolate-covered steak, mashed potatoes with pineapple bits, special K with chilli powder sprinkled on it instead of sugar. Jessie thought that being an adult seemed more like a punishment than a reward. And then I just want to read this little paragraph out here uh, at the start of chapter 27. The next four hours were the worst of Jessie Burlingame's life. The cramps in her muscles grew steadily more frequent and more intense, but it wasn't intramuscular pain that made the hours between an 11 and 3 so terrible. It was her mind's stubborn, gruesome refusal to relinquish its hold on lucidity and go into the dark. She had read Poe's The Telltale Heart in junior high school, but not until now had she grasped the real horror of its opening lines. Nervous, true, very nervous I am and have been, but why will you say I am mad? Madness would be a relief, but madness would not come. Neither would sleep. Death might beat them both, and dark certainly would. She would only lie on the bed, existing in a dull, olive-drab reality shot through with occasional gaudy blasts of pain as her muscles cramped up. The cramps mattered, and so did her horrible, tiresome sanity, but little else seemed to. Certainly the world outside this room had ceased to hold any real meaning for her. In fact, she came strongly to believe that there was no world outside this room, that all the people who had once filled it had gone back to some existential central casting office, and all the scenery had been packed away like stage flats after one of Ruth's beloved college drama society productions. Okay, so when uh, Jessie finally gets free, uh, this is what happens. She couldn't seem to take her eyes off her hands, couldn't seem to stop shrieking. She'd never felt anything remotely like what she was feeling now, and some distant part of her thought, if sex was even half this good, people would be doing it on every street corner. They just wouldn't be able to help themselves. Thought this was uh, nicely written here. Interesting to find that a person's mind was really nothing but a graveyard built over a black hollow place with freakish reptiles like this crawling around the bottom. Interesting. She also, when she was a child, she thought that a little cum on her fanny might make her pregnant. In England, fanny means something else, so little cum on you, your fan, fanny might make you pregnant, I guess. I mean, it'd have to, you'd have to be unfortunate. Let me get a reference to, uh, basically there's this mad guy in it, and uh, he believes that George Bush is actually Dana Carvey, the guy who plays the church lady on Saturday Night Live. I don't know because we don't have Saturday Night Live over here, but I do know Dana Carvey as Garth from Wayne's World. I actually didn't really like this extra storyline with this sort of serial killer guy thrown in. It just felt a bit gratuitous. I think, I don't know. I feel as though the novel, it wouldn't have 
been able to hold up as a novel it would have just been a novella without it but i think maybe it would have been better as a novella you know so overall i thought this was really well written and it was very enjoyable i read through it in about 36 hours or so it's probably one of the fastest times i've read a stephen king book in uh, even though I knew roughly what to expect from it, I still enjoyed it. I think if anything that helped because it helped to set my expectations. Overall, I gave it a 4 out of 5. I would recommend it to people. Uh, even if you're new to King, it's not a bad one to go for. And definitely if you're a seasoned King fan, I think it's, it's easily up there in his top half and maybe in his top third of his books. Maybe even his top quarter. Is that what you thought too, Biggie? Yeah? So there we have it. There's my quick review of Gerald's Game by Stephen King. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.